Hey y'all, Thorn Plant Killer here, Jesse with Living on a Prayer Flower Farm. And in today's video, we are going over starting amaranth, the coral fountain and emerald tassels to be exact, getting eucalyptus finally in the ground, and going over the good bugs that I put out to help battle the bad bugs and where I ordered them from. So let's get started. All right guys, so I did a great video of starting the amaranth and getting the seeds going. And then I guess I deleted it. I don't know where it is. I can't find it. So you won't see me actually starting the seeds, but I will talk to you about what I planted and how to start amaranth. So the first thing we're gonna start off with is coral amaranth. Look at it. Need I say more of why we're gonna grow this? I guess I should explain the main reason I want to grow coral fountain amaranth is due to Serena with You Can't Eat the Grass. She last season went on and on about it. I had to buy it. I had to have this for myself. And it's beautiful. Now amaranth is a heat loving animal. You do want to wait until all frost is gone. According to Johnny's, it's excellent for cut or dried flowers. Support may be necessary, so make sure you've got some netting, some stakes, something to support it. So four to six weeks before last frost, if you're gonna transplant, barely cover the seed, bottom water or mist to avoid covering seeds, harden off and transplant after last frost. If you're gonna direct seed it, do so after your last frost. Both so thinly, barely covering the seeds. And then when they have their first tree leaves, be sure to thin to 12 to 15 inches apart. It does require full sun, well-drained soil, pH of six to seven is preferred. Spacing is gonna be 12 to 15 inches apart. So when I sowed these, I just used my big black tray, uh, cut it in half to do one of each, and I didn't cover the seeds at all. I just gently placed them on top, covered with a thin layer of vermiculite, spritzed it with my spritzer, dawn went on and went under the light it took it maybe three days to germinate for me according to johnny so it can take seven to ten days to germinate and these will be mature in 65 to 75 days and i gotta tell you they they are coming up fast my emerald tassels are same thing so four to six weeks treat it exactly the same as the coral fountain and Guys, these sprouted really fast. I'm super excited to have them in my garden. I'm tired of being envious of Serena on You Can't Eat the Grass with her beautiful amaranth. I'm gonna have that beautiful amaranth this year, by golly. So let's take a look at the eucalyptus I got in the ground and the good bugs I ordered to help battle the bad bugs. And then we'll take a look at my amaranth and how it's doing. All right, guys. So it is time. I have been waiting so long. These babies that have been growing, it's my eucalyptus. Out of all the ones I planted, these are the only ones that are still alive. <gasps> what happened to you? You look so sad. Ah. Ah. Oh. Okay. Out of all the ones I started, these survived. Baby blue. I don't know what happened to baby blue. She turned yellow and died. Maybe she was getting too much water. But the rest of them look fine. I don't know. I don't know. That stinks. Anyway, it's time to get these in the ground. And they do not smell like eucalyptus. So I'm kind of disappointed in that. Thought they would smell like eucalyptus. But it is time to get them in the ground. So let's do it.
was a lot of fun. I had my friend Caitlin here with me last night. She was here to watch a movie and while she was here, I got a package of bugs. Green lace wing eggs to be exact. And she was kind enough, we waited till the sun went down to put them out. So I don't think she ever expected to help me put out bugs in my garden. But that's what she did last night. Uh, didn't record it just because the video quality is not good at night whatsoever. But it's green lace wing eggs. Preferred food. So this is what they eat. They eat aphids, white flies, mites, thrips, moth eggs, mealy bugs, scale leaf hoppers, leaf miners in the eggs, and nymphs of many other pests. So they are good bugs. Good bugs to battle all the bad bugs. Because I've already noticed on some of my vernoculas, I've got some aphids going on. Not good. So I ordered these. They recommend putting out a set of three. So in a couple weeks to ordering another one and having it come out and put it out. But this is what they look like. Let me see if I can find it. My bachelor buttons are opening. So the wind slowed the other day knocked a lot of them down. But look at that. Look how pretty focused. Is that not gorgeous? I, I love these jewel tones. They're gorgeous. And you can see there's eggs. Those are lace wig eggs. And I hung them in here because there's a lot of bugs in there. I hung some around my binoculars as well. So what they'll do is the eggs will eventually hatch and you know, go out and then eat on all the food that is available. So I put them where I had a lot of plants, a lot of bugs likely to be, and I will just continue to purchase these. I got them from Ar Arbico, Arbico Organics. I'll put a link down in the description, not sponsored, but uh, that's where I got these. I saw it on a Facebook group where people recommended buying from them. They have ladybugs, they've got praying mantises, and a bunch of other bugs to manage bad insects. I really don't want to spray. I don't want to have to be out of here spraying every single night. I probably still might have to get some Nemo. We'll see. But I'm hoping if I order enough of these and some other, some ladybugs, I can help keep the aphid and leafhopper population in control. We shall see. Uh -uh. Look at my vernaculars. They are gorgeous right now. So here's my amaranth. Um, it got leggy on me. It got pretty leggy. And by leggy, I mean the stems aren't that strong. Look at this. There, can you see that? And they actually, they sprouted pretty much the next day. Within a few days, even though I had the light like right on top of them, they just, whoo, they were up. And I'm not sure why they got leggy because I've got love and a mist in this tray. Not sure how that happened. Anyway, <laughs> but uh, they they got pretty leggy. I've had the fan on them trying to help the stem, but because they are leggy, we're going to we're going to go ahead and pot them up, and we're going to plant them pretty deep because we want to give it a chance to have a stronger stem. So. Oh, I see my gloves. And, eh, eh. I was actually going to record this last night, but we had a big thunderstorm and you could hear nothing but rain and thunder, even with the mic on. So my soil already prepped. It, is it still damp? Still damp. Always transplant into damp soil if possible. That way you're not trying to put roots in something so dry. And I've got, how many pots do I have? One, two, three, 23, 24, 25. I got 25 pots. I'll do 12 of each. And then the next one, we'll see. But like I said, I'm gonna plant them deep. So let's, let me show you. I'm just going to gently dig these up and separate them. 
That is really easy. I'm gonna stick my finger down in there. And then I'm gonna stuff the roots as far in there as I can. And I still have some dirt down here to get it out. So there we go, a good bit down in there as deep as I could get it. So instead of it sitting down like this, I got a lot more of it down in there. Let me show you one more time. And this is Coral Fountain. I'll need to make labels for all of these because I'm gonna get confused. I'm gonna think the ones with the pink stems are coral and that these are emerald. So I'm gonna have to make sure I don't get confused. So I'm gonna make a nice deep hole in my already started soil. And I'm gonna pot up as close to the first couple of leaves as I can. Because I don't want a weak plant out there. We get a lot of strong winds. And speaking of strong winds, oh, my bachelor buttons, they, I didn't think they would really need support, but apparently they do here because they got so tall. And I guess we had a lot of wind last night because they were all knocked over. And to give you reference, these were planted three, March 21st. Today's April 10th. Nope, you're on the wrong side of the line. All right. You know, it's funny to me. Everybody wants to come see my farm and take pictures of my farm because they think it just looks so beautiful right now. I'm like, ah, <laughs> my farm does not look beautiful right now. It is so bare. <laughs> like there's pops of color from the ranoculas and there's little pops over there from the daffodils, but it's not pretty right now. Now when the zinnias and the sunflowers are going, oh, it'll be beautiful. But, uh, it doesn't look anything like what you would think it would look like from the pictures I post. I mean, <laughs> use the wish.com reference. You've got a beautiful Jesse holding a bucket full of daffodils and it looks beautiful. What it really is, is just me picking out that small patch of flowers and making it look like it's a lot when it's really not. Who's got a strong stem? Not you. Or are you? You do. I'll pick you. You live. My husband is like, Jesse, where are you going to put all these plants? I'm like, honey. What you don't understand is half these plants that you see in here might not make it. <laughs> they could all die because hello, plant killer. So I have to plant a whole lot more seedlings than what I think I need because half of them probably going to die. It's just how it is. If you're a plant killer, you need to know these things. You need to know there's a good chance you're going to kill a lot of these plants. So you need to plant more just in case. I don't have any labels back here. Okay, I'll label them after I do this. Turn the tray around, turn around. Every now and then I get a little bit something and I turn around, turn around. Every now and then I get a little bit done and then na 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 turn around bright eyes every now and then i fall apart and i apologize for my really bad singing i really can't help it but i gotta find something to pass the time <laughs> wow this is gonna be so much help for that <laughs> stick to killing plants babe you know, what's one trait that you really wish you had but you don't have? Mine would definitely be singing. I really wish I could sing. <laughs> but God said, no, that is not your gift. Your gift will not be singing. <laughs> oh. 
Nej, det sånt stack mig heller. So this is all that I'm potting up. The rest of these, I may uh, let live in here a little bit longer. Because I really hate to throw away plants. And we'll, uh, if anything happens with, I planted way too many is what I did. <laughs> I didn't think germination would be that great. I did not think germination would be this great and it, and it is. So now I'm stuck with them. But that's okay. I'm gonna throw these back under the light and let them continue to do their thing. And I will start moving these outside. So I'll start harding them off and getting them ready to go in the ground because the sooner I do that, the better. And like I said, if I end up scorching them, which seems to be my issue this year, or some random bug disease, eh or if I end up having rot, like my China Asters, I'll at least have some backups if they live in the pan that long. We'll see. But yes, these, these will start going out starting tomorrow morning. I've got so many plants on the porch hardening off. Cannot wait. If you're new to my channel, I'm a former plant killer on a flower farm journey and trying to help other plant killers along the way or beginner flower farmers along the way. So if you'd like to follow my journey, be sure to hit the subscribe button. No way am I an expert. Learning as we go here. If you would like to watch more videos like this on where I start from seed all the way to one month, be sure to check out the playlist here. And if you'd like to have a good laugh and watch me chase a wild chicken, be sure to check the video here. I'll see you guys later. Bye. I need a label. Label. And then we can start more seeds.